Hello, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All the, <laughs> brief introduction. Um, thank you so much for coming back to our extemporary PD extravaganza for this Tuesday morning session with Dr. Claudia Fernandez. Part two of formative assessments when teaching with us are our students ready for the target task. If you happen to miss part one, that's no big deal. You can head back to the SCED uh, platform and you can see the recording of part one so you can catch up on everything that you missed. And of course, this, this session will also be recorded and uploaded later today for you to review should you miss anything or just want to watch it again. And with that, Claudia, take it away. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. It's very nice to be here again, you know, and see uh, yeah, more names that are more familiar with me for me uh, than yesterday. So <clears throat> let's start with this um, with this uh, workshop, and uh, um, uh, it's going to be a little bit more interactive than yesterday, you know, because you know we already have more information. But if in, if by if you have some questions or you want me to, you want uh, me to interrupt and then uh, I'll read your question, please let me know. So let's um, let's start and um, let's see what we're gonna do today. So it is going to be two topics, you know, and we're going to go more in focus with the pedagogic tasks. What is a, ped a pedagogic task? And I'm gonna show you some examples and how the ways in which we can evaluate this pedagogic task because, and, and which is, you know, in theory, as we said it, for the, the formative assessment aspect of our courses, right? And I say in theory, because as we say yesterday, a formative, assessment can also have the characteristics of the summative assessment, right? So we're going to do that. And hopefully, we can identify one pedagogic task for your class, right, for a target task that maybe you already thought about, right? And what criteria or what, 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 what criteria of criteria you might think you can use to evaluate students' progress according to this pedagogic task, and what tools Will you use or would you use, right? So there are it's, it's a, it's three things that hopefully we can do today. If you start thinking about it, if you, I don't, maybe the goal is too ambitious to, to have you, you know, to have a very well prepared and structured pedagogic task and its evaluation, you know, but at least if you start thinking about it, it will be a good start. So let's see what we have. Let's just have a review. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know. The first thing is that we're, if we're going to be talking about task-based teaching and working with tasks, we need to know what a task is, right? What are the characteristics of a task, which are very uh, particular and peculiar, um, and it is good to know so we can start uh, creating this target task and pedagogic task with these things in mind. So the first thing that we know, remember, is that a task has a focus on meaning and communication. And that means that students have to understand what they are doing, right, understand the language, understand the messages, and the task has to have a purpose that is not only a linguistic purpose, right, it has a purpose that has a com communicative purpose. It means that the students will have to do something with the information they are dealing with, right, there is an ultimate purpose, right, um, so this is some things that a task has to have. Also, it involves, a task involves the same cognitive processes and linguistic processes that we would use, that we would, you know, yeah, have in tasks that are beyond the classroom, right? So as I said, you know, a task that it is, for example, to be an exercise that it's filling the blanks, right? My, for verb tenses, my, is, does, does not involve the same cognitive processes that a task, you know, which is a presentation of a neighborhood, for example, involves. So the task has to draw on the same cognitive processes that we would use when we are outside of the classroom. Also, there is an information gap that needs to be closed. You know, I have information that you need and you don't have, and you need it in order to complete the task, right? There has to be an information gap that needs to be closed. Also, a, a task has a clearly defined purpose that is not linguistic, right? So if I say, well, what's the purpose of your task or your pedagogic task? And you tell me the purpose is to practice the present tense, well, that's not a task, right? It has to have an ultimate purpose as we saw yesterday with the pedagogic task of the two favorite cities, Tokyo and Kyoto. You know, it had an ultimate purpose that it was not linguistic. And finally, a task is, contextualized, you know, it takes into, into, into consideration the context in which the task is 
is being done, right? The audience, the purpose, who are the participants, right? It is complex in number of interacting elements, right? A task has to, maybe students need to, need to um, uh, gather information, they need to uh, synthesize, they need to present, they need to draw, they need to interview, you know, it has, you know, several interactive, um, it has a goal, right? Elements. And also it asks learners for different resources, their own linguistic resources, their own abilities, their own knowledge of the world, you know? So it gathers learners different linguistic or several linguistic or knowledge resources or abilities, right? So it is, it is um, a complex thing to create, right? A task. Okay, so when we think about our target task, the ultimate goal of the unit, think about these characteristics. And when we think about the pedagogic task, the things that are going to support the accomplishment of the target task, think about these characteristics as well, right? Okay, so let's see, you know, let's start right away with your target task, right? I guess, you know, I, I asked you yesterday and it was a kind of homework. I'm sorry if I, if I say homework, but at least if you think, if you can share with us something that you maybe have done in class that it has the characteristics of a task, or something that you thought about yesterday or been thinking about and you want to see, share with us if it is a task. So let's see what it is. So first, is there a task that you would like to do in your class and or you have done? Share it with us. I want you to focus in two things. First, tell us about it in, you know, in general terms. And then tell us about its different components, right? What is that this, because since it's a complex thing, you know, what is that this task entails? For example, what knowledge students need to know or need to have in order to do a task, right? Knowledge of the world. If the task is to present an ideal neighborhood, students need to know about neighborhoods, right? What makes a neighborhood ideal? Students might not know that, right? Uh, so what, information about the topic students need to learn in order to do the task. Yeah, Shannon is already saying create a cooking video. Okay, <laughs> yes, already Shannon. Okay, now Shannon, you have to think about the linguist, the, the knowledge, no, that it, that, that it entails, a review of the restaurant, right? And as Alejandro says, and what abilities, a second thing, what abilities do this task need from the, from this, from the student? Writing, interpreting, a text or a listening, presenting something, drawing something, interviewing someone. There, are, what are no, what is the knowledge involved, right? Very good, uh, Grant. <laughs> Make a social media post, okay. And finally, what linguistic resources my students are going to need to do this task? Just the essential resources, right? We don't need to students to have things that they don't know or they don't need, right? Okay, so. Since I think you are everybody, almost, uh, many people are already ready, you know, Alejandro recommending a book or a film, you know, creating a cooking, uh, other people have the same things, um, very nice ideas. So what I'm gonna do since we are 22 participants and I think like I can manage some uh, breakout rooms, but first, since already, I think I already, people have already think about their task. I, I will give you like 30 seconds to think about your target task and think about these two elements. I'm gonna give you like 30 seconds. Wow, well, make a video resume, right? Describing their class schedule. Describing their class schedule, wow, yes. Recommending a book, make a video resume. Wow, that's very nice. Uh, Okay, so um, let's, um, let's, maybe we can, if you are ready, let's, future profession, okay, uh, Mirna did labor once, okay, Mirna, uh, just so you know, when you say future profession, what is that they, what they, that you, the students need to do? Present, create a video, write it for future profession. What is that you want? Make it a little bit more um, defined, right? Introduce their family members. Okay, fantastic. Find someone who shares your likes and dislikes. Okay. And then what are they going to do with this information after they find someone to share your likes and dislikes? How, Cheryl, how are they going to, um, what is the uh, final outcome or, what, or the 
product. Think about it, right? Find someone who shares your life and then what for, for what? Introduce the family members. Okay, so in uh, in a presentation, in a poster, Josh, um, do you want to students to create a video? Um, uh, how many family members? You know what things like that. So think a little bit, define a little bit. Negotiate a cheaper price. Okay, <laughs> regatear. Yes, exactly. And then okay, and then what? Right. Uh, that's uh, that's a good. Yeah, and then. Uh, maybe we have to create a little bit of a context, right? What is the context of this regatea thing, you know, of this of this task? Okay, and if they are going to get it, right? If they are going to, if they if they got the price that they want, so write an assignment about famous women in their and their achievement. Okay, so what type of assignment? May, that's a fantastic assignment. What 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 is that people do in the real world with these types of writings about? women and their achievements is either like a preface of the book if cd is it a, a short essay for a web you know publish <laughs> published okay all right so what i'm gonna do is i think that you have some some ideas so fantastic define i want them I, I want you to think in the final product right because you want to see the abilities that the students need in order to uh to 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 present or to or to give to show you right that the task has been accomplished right what are they going to do so they see that piece of blog if it's a video if it's something right so find like a structure or a, or a base you know okay so i'll give you let's say five minutes and i'm gonna put you in very quickly in um breakout rooms uh let's see if i can do that and what you are going to do is you are going to share with your partner your task and define the components. It's very important to define the components because this is going to give you an idea when you do the pedagogic task and uh, later on, right? So I am going to create the um, breakout rooms. If I know how to do it, any, I don't know how to do it anymore. Oh yeah, I can. I can do it for you. Yeah. You can do it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That would be great. Okay, so just you okay. know, randomly three people maybe in a group would be great. You know, okay. and then I want to give you five minutes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. It was um, as I said, I asked you to think about the target, your target task, and the few components of the of the task. Right. The tasks, as I say, are complex. They have many components. But let's see what is the task. Maybe we can use a chat, or maybe you can tell us if you want to. Uh, let's have just a, a few of them. So what is, someone wants to participate orally and tell us what is the task about and what are the components of the task? Or maybe in the chat, perhaps. I believe Xiomara raised her hand. She can, she can speak if she's ready. Okay. Yeah, so me and Noreen, um, we shared, um, the first one I shared was a uh, uh, food network and a cooking and the uh -huh. knowledge that the students need to have, obviously beforehand, vocab, words, um, you know, about, you know, when you like mix and beat and all those different terminology along with the cooking uh, resources and food uh, resources, because um, the students, they, we watched them, um, I had them watch videos, the different country, the Bolivia and another one, I can't think of the, the country uh -huh, right now, it's uh -huh. summertime. Um, and so the students um, got to know the different foods from those regions culturally. And then the next task was for them to choose who they wanted to work with. And then they had to investigate and find a recipe. I gave them a list, but the students were able to choose them list or also find their own. They had to um, rep, they had to prepare it on video. They had to come up with their own group name for the TV show. And um, mm. so okay. obviously then the linguistic resources that they needed. Um, at that time, I were do, do, we were doing the say in personal. Um, and so I, I know that we talked about yesterday not having um, very stringent, but that was one thing that they did need to know because we had talked about it. And um, yes, and then also okay. with Noreen, she, 
Oh, yeah, sorry. And then Noreen, she presented um, the real a uh, real estate agent. Um, yeah, real estate agent project and the students, they have to learn all the different terminology for the different rooms, the houses. And she talked about how she can make it levels um, depending on the students and how they in a, in have to uh, either build the house using Legos or a digital house. And then at the end, they had to walk through the house describing the room. And then they would have to say why the person, you know, based on their level, you know, say, oh, maybe your kids would love playing in this room or, you know, you would love to plant some like plants in this garden. And so mm -hmm. that, um, and then she okay. said the linguistic research would be present tense or whatever the, um, the tense uh, was of study at that time. Well, exactly. Well, that, that's fantastic. That's that. that these, these are two very nice, very nice uh, tasks, you know, and they look like tasks. And um, and, uh, and let me just have a, a few questions for you, so everybody, so, so everybody starts starts thinking. So, uh, I want, I would like that that you define the task that with with, in a, with within a few sentences, right? Students are going to um, present uh, or, or present a, or show a recipe, right, for a food network. Right, so that is what in, in in a few words they are going to say. The task is that you are going to prepare a recipe, right, for a food. It's like a TV program, right? I would say like a TV, yes. like in a video, right, right. So you're going to create a video where you present a recipe where you show how to cook something, right, to the audience, right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in that way, it is it it is more like very specifically like defined, right, and okay. then for the you know what I mean? Like, the, so your task, otherwise the students are going to be, because tasks are complex for sure, but you will need to de describe them in a very simple terms, which is, you know, difficult, I would say. But just, just for you is, for us, it's going to be much more uh, uh, clear if we have it like, like, like a clear description, right? So the task is to create a video where you show how to prepare a dish for an audience, right? Mm -hmm. So in that way, you know, you know. So then you have to say, well, the, co the components these students maybe are need to need to know how to how to videotape, right? That will be something that they need to know, right? That, that ability, right? They need they need a topic of the dish, right? The dishes, right? The dish that they want that they want to to cook, right? So they might need to know, you know, how how a recipe is is done, right? And how it is described. And then they will have to maybe, um, that, that is more a pedagogic task, but they have to watch a little videos, I would say. So they learn how to do it, right? And then the linguistic resources. So so this is things that, um, that in my opinion, I would I would define, right, more your task. Now for the okay. travel, travel agent, I'm gonna go back a little bit to, and then the linguistic resources for everyone to know. And then I wanna ask someone else so we can have other ideas. But for the travel agent, well, the task is to show, to do an open house, right? I think that it is, if I, if I understand correctly, right? Like travel agents, I mean, not travel, I mean, uh, um, real estate agents, what they do in the real world, in the real world, in the world outside of the classroom, because the classroom is real too, but is to do um, open houses, right? I have I have been to many of them, right? So, and this is a, for a task that it is authentic. So you are going to do an open house. You are gonna you are going to imagine that you are going to a real estate agent and you are going to do an open house. So what does the student need to know in order to do an open house? You know, share. I mean show the house, the pros, you know, what the, the nice aspect of the house, how many with the purpose of selling, right, that house, because that's, that's the purpose of the, of the, of the uh, open house. So uh, in that sense, you know, that defines the task, you know, so at the end of this class, students, you are going to do an open house of your favorite house or a house that you are going to be assigned or whatever it is that you want to do it. Now, with respect to the uh, to the linguistic resources, and I think this is the most difficult thing that we need to do, but it's a challenge, and I think that we can do it, right? If we understand correctly, if we understand what is the purpose of the task, is that the task is what leads the curriculum. The task is what leads the content, not the other way around. It's not that, well, since I have to teach the say in personal, let me see what is that I have to do. 
no, right? It's not necessarily that way. I know that our textbooks want to do it that way or, or set us, you know, to do it in that way. But I would say that they don't know, they don't need to know the set personal necessarily, right? They just need maybe for the recipe, they just need to, uh, to know a few um, expressions, right? That they are going to learn through the pedagogic task in order for them to describe a dish. But if they, it's not necessarily, no, right? Sometimes you can just use the future, like Ravana said this, you are going to mix and now you are going to do it. So not necessarily has to be the same personality. So let's see, let's see if we can do, if we can allow the task to tell us what we need to teach, right? In order to, in order for students to do the task, right? So I think it is a change in perspective, right? Because it's not that we want the students to know the present tense, right? It, it's, it is not that the topic, they, they, it's not that the goal, right? The goal is communication. So the goal is for students to do a, an open house. So what is that student that, that so we need to know the nature of the task, right? What is an open house? And what is the things that usually are said when people do open houses? That is very challenging because we, we, we need to completely change the perspective but let's do if we can try, if we can, if we can do it in this workshop and at least, you know, make us start thinking about it. So thank you very much, Dora. Was it Dora? Was it, I don't know what was. Who well, was, that was, was that was Siamara. Dora has her hand up now. Okay, <laughs> yes. So Dora, now Dora, thank you very much for, for um, the, these two tasks are fantastic open houses and, and uh, uh, video of um, how to cook something. Um, and they are very interesting too. So Dora, let us, tell us about yours. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Guess what? I was happy. I was with a French teacher. That's Celeste. That's fantastic. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so um, what I share with Celeste is, uh, you know, the task is to travel uh, to a French city as a tourist and ask questions, uh, directions, you know, to um, landmarks. So the student um, had to create uh, an itinerary mm -hmm. using a Google map through Padlet. And of course, the end result was to have an interpersonal um, activity in extemporary. So the student had to know um, polite expressions, you know, um, like, um, please, I want to go to La Tour Eiffel. Um, how do I get there? They had okay. to know adverbs of location because they had to say, uh, go behind, go to blocks, cross, you know, um, uh -huh. of course, landmarks uh, in that city. And um, so the end result was uh, the students exchanging information, one playing the tourists and then the other um, being um, a person that lives in that city and, you know, like guide. I see. Okay, so let's see, Dora, if you can, if you could for us, and maybe the, the rest of the the rest of us can maybe help her. How do you? How would you describe your task in two sentences? Students will do what? Student will ask directions uh, to landmarks uh -huh. in the city by using a. Uh, polite expressions and questions, you know. Okay. And of course, okay, it's okay. simple presentation. Oh. So if, okay, so you, you, that's okay. I think, so you want students to ask for directions. To do what? To go and visit um, maybe the museum in France, um, you know, okay. go to the Eiffel Tower or, um, okay. you know, Versailles. Okay, so the purpose is to, the purpose of the, your task is to, uh, find out how to get to this museum, to this other, to this other landmark, and to this yes. other thing, right? To three things, right? through, yes. through things in Paris or whatever is the city. Okay, yes. so that is the task. So the task is that we are visiting Paris and we need to go to three three different places and we don't know how to get there, right? Yes. So um, the task is to find out how to get there, right? And I guess someone knows, right? Maybe another person in the in the class knows the information. Yes, and they can and they can give it to them. Okay, all right. So okay, so that is the task. Um, and what is that? And the students need to know first, you know, how to ask for directions, right? Yes. 
Okay, all right, okay. So in that way, just um, uh, fantastic. So just try just to define, you know, the task in a sim in simple terms, so you so students know what to do, right? Fantastic, Dora. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, great. All right. So uh, let's see what the, what we have in the chat. Just so let's see. So they create a brochure of their favorite tourist site. Okay, that's a fantastic task, Mirna. Create a, bro a brochure. It's a it's a it's a dog. It's a product, you know, a, a solid product, right? of their favorite tourist site. And this is something that happens in, in beyond the classroom. Publishing publishing us a great idea for publishing. Okay, just, just say that. So Cheryl says the the and and the what is what is what I need more through and practice with Cheryl. Okay, so Cheryl, we're gonna you're gonna be next uh, when we uh, when we talk about the pedagogic tasks. And um, Let's see, Celeste uh, says, describe a favorite icon person or famous person as we learn about you and what you like. So describe a favorite person. So Celeste, you describe a favorite person and then how are you, how are you going to, what is, the, what is the solid product? You describe it how, in a video or in a, in a presentation, in a poster? Right, either in typically we do it in um, slides or there I'll give them the option of doing it as a video as well. Okay. Um, but oftentimes we'll we'll do it in slides where they'll do pictures of the person and then um, do various descriptions as well. And I tend to do that um, as we're as we're learning about new students as well. Uh -huh. So everybody does their descriptions, but then we kind of learn a little bit more about them with the people that they like. Um, uh -huh. as well. So that's why we choose exactly. icons or famous people. Yep, exactly. It's very good. So I, I do, I, I have a similar task for my students in Spanish 101 the first semester and the, what the audience have to, just to give you an idea if you give me, it's helpful, what the audience has to do with this information is to find out who is the person that they would like to meet, for example, right? So the audience has, you know, a purpose to attend to these presentations, you know, so we are going to describe a famous person and what is the, pop, the most popular one, the one that you know, the class wants really to meet, for example, right? A follow-up, fantastic. And now Shannon says, um, the students would also need to knowledge, to need knowledge of transportation systems in the larger city. And I think it was a project uh, uh, comment to Doras. Okay, exactly, very good, Shannon. And Mirna says, create a video, or um, create a video, let's see, where is it? I just, just create a video tour of your school for a new exchange student, fantastic. A tour of your school for a new exchange student is fantastic because it has a product, a video of your school, right? Something that is, uh, is people do, right? In, their, in, in, in real life and is for an audience, right? For an exchange student, fantastic task, very good. Um, and then Susan says, novice intermediate low task. Okay, prepare a short presentation on who your favorite hero is and describe them <clears throat> and how and who your favorite villain is and describe the hero and villain. Then class notes that takes notes, common descriptors for each category, and we discuss what are traits we value in heroes and villains. Fantastic. This leads to a discussion of valid cultural traits and of valid cultural traits. Okay, very good, right? Uh, needed components. For example, this presentation skills, listening skills, um, <clears throat> trait, descriptors about 10 or 15 that are value positively topic introduction phrases, fantastic. Okay, great. All right. So let's uh, <clears throat> let's since we already have our target task in mind, right? We of course the ideal thing would be to create the evaluation criteria that we are going to use to evaluate these target tasks, right? And when we create evaluation criteria, it helps us to shape, to better polish our target task, right? And that is a very nice exercise and it is necessary that you do. A target task has to have an evaluation criteria always, right? You cannot have, you cannot not, not have it, right? It has to have, how am I going to evaluate? And this evaluation, as, as we talked yesterday was, it is a summative evaluation, right? A summative assessment because the target task is the end, the end product is the goal, right? Is what we want students, students are gonna show us that what they have learned right, through the target task. So the evaluation, the rubric that we use, the criteria that we have is going to help us evaluate whether or not students have accomplished the goal. Now let's do, what we're going to do, I ask you to really to, uh, to think about the components of your task because based on these components is going to help you to create 
the pedagogic tasks in the classroom or outside of the classroom for homework that are going to support your students in their accomplishment of the target task. So remember that my task yesterday was to present an ideal neighborhood, right? Students are going to present their ideal neighborhood to the class, right? And the class is going to select the best two, the best two neighborhoods in their opinion. So the pedagogic task that I created, one of them to support the students in this target task is so one that I, that I uh, adapted from my textbook. And it was about the <clears throat> two cities, right? Students will have to listen or read an article about Tokyo and Kyoto, remember? And <clears throat> decide which city they would like to live in and why. Right? What is what is about Kyoto that you like, and what is about uh, Tokyo? And with the purpose to see which city was the most popular in the class. So <clears throat> I'm gonna show it to you uh, very quickly. But I want you to think about the following aspects when you evaluate your pedagogic tasks in order for you to be able to give feedback and to monitor whether or not your students are making progress. Right. So the first thing that we need to no, or maybe one of the first things when you talk about pedagogic task is why is this task valuable for the target task my ideal neighborhood or finding you know a place in Paris or create a brochure or food network or for my open house right in what ways this target this pedagogic task that I'm creating is going to help students to achieve the target task then what is the desirable evidence that showed that students learn from this pedagogic task, right? I did it in the classroom. It took me 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes to do this task. And what ways am I going to see to show that students learned from this, right? What they know they can do. So for example, what information do I need? Um, is it, for example, that is the, the, the information that, that students gave me when they were doing the task, the written material that they did, you know, what is the follow-up? Um, homework, you know, what is the evidence that I would need? Something else, maybe. And then the evaluation tools. What is am I going to use to monitor, to, to, to check, right? Is it a checklist? Is it a rubric? How am I going to evaluate that this pedagogic task was accomplished to criteria? Or maybe just a mental note, right? We are very good at doing mental notes, you know, <laughs> because there are so many things to track of. So something that is that you have to have in your mind, what is, how am I going to evaluate this? What opportunities for feedback would you see, right, in this task? Because the purpose of the formative assessment is to give students feedback in one way, in one way or another, so they know whether or not they are doing, and you know too, whether or not they are doing, you know, the things that you want them to do. <clears throat> and of course, what is it? What are the challenges that we are going to face when giving this evaluation? You know, and challenges could be time constraints. You know, too many students. Uh, I have like. I don't know, five classes and it is just going to be crazy, you know, if I do so all of these challenges, or challenges that are more internal, right? It's not very, I cannot perceive very, very well because I don't have a final product. So I, it's just my intuition, etc. So take into consideration these uh, five aspects and let's just revise this pedagogic task one and tell me <clears throat> in what ways this is valuable. So, so for those of you who were not yesterday, uh, here yesterday, one pedagogic task for me was to, um, to find out which of two Japanese cities are more desirable to live according to the class, uh, because the target task was to present the ideal neighborhood. Students read this magazine article in which two people are describing their cities, Kyoto and Tokyo, and the, the task of the students was to say what things are similar in both cities and what things are different. So students have to read with a purpose. Then you are gonna listen to Izumi and how who, who is talking about her home city with a friend and which city is she referring to, Tokyo or Kyoto. So the students have to listen with a purpose again and what are her recommendations. They're gonna have to take notes, right? And they are going to compare with another person in your class. And that is to make students accountable for their work, right? <clears throat> and then you are going to say which of this or which of these cities would you like to live in and why and you give one minute to the students to think because they are not going to put out the answer give a minute to think and maybe they can write down what city would they like to live in and why Kyoto or Tokyo based on what they learned in A and B and then after the minute they share it with a partner 
right? Because then uh, they are gonna be ready to share it with a partner. They have the information already. So they would write something like, I would like to live in Kyoto because I like mid-sized cities, Kyoto has, blah, blah, right? And the purpose to share it with a partner is to see if they both agree. Do you like Kyoto too, or do you like Tokyo? Oh, interesting. I We are different or we, are, or we agree, but we agree for different reasons, for example, right? And then they are going to report what they found out uh, to the rest of the class. And the teacher or someone else, another student, is going to take a tally of which is the city that is, was the most popular, right? Tokyo, maybe, or Kyoto, whatever. And then list the reasons why people think that Kyoto is an uh, interesting city, a little city, things that the class values as desirable characteristics for the city, right? And this is the outcome, an interest. So when the students finish the classes, well, why did you learn today? I learned that. I learned about Kyoto and Tokyo, and I learned that my classmates, the, the city that my class likes are, you know, um, um, Kyoto, because they like mid-sized cities. Interesting. I didn't know that. that uh, for me, that it is different, because for me, I like pre really big cities, but the rest of my classmates say that Tokyo, that Kyoto, and for these qualities. So we have a communicative purpose accomplished. Now, that's great, no? In paper, that looks great. Now. Tell me, what do you think, what this task is valuable for the target task? Can someone tell me, in what ways does it contribute for a student's learning of the target task? Once to do it in the chat, just give me one or two things that you think, in what ways. I love analyzing uh, activities and tasks. So in what ways does it contribute to my purpose of the students giving a presentation of the ideal neighborhood. They can learn what makes a city desirable, exactly, right? Uh, and they can maybe, these, these, these features can be applied to neighborhoods, right? Maybe, right? Okay, so they learn about the topic, right? Which is a, a, a component of the target task. Okay, so what, what do you think? Let's see what Shannon says. It helps them describe cities. It gives them a way to express opinions, okay? Um, they hear how others describe and use the vocabulary, right? Uh, they, and the vocabulary that they already heard in the input, right? In the description in the magazine and what Izumi was saying, right? Okay, um, language chunks, okay, uh, the city has, it's in language chunks, the city has parks, the city has uh, museums, the city has, so this verb has, you know, I don't want them to, to I, I, won't, I won't teach el verbo tener or the verb to have, at all, because there are so many instances in which we are using these, the city has that students are going to learn it by, you know, incidentally almost. Okay, so in what ways is the most important thing? In what ways the students' information, what is students, you know, in what ways you can evaluate this task, evaluate students' learning of this task? Imagine that you are, you are doing in your, in your, in your, in your class, and then you're gonna see what, how I do, how do I know if this task was, you know, conducive to learning? <clears throat> Students had to, uh, let me just go back a little bit. Students had to show comprehension in A and B. They need to identify things that are helpful for them and they need to share. So students can name three traits of a desirable city. Yes, Grant, exactly. How do you know that the students can name three traits of a desirable city? Where, wh what is the, uh, the evidence? Where do you have it? I mean, for me, the evidence would be that they've interpreted the magazine article properly. Yes, so, but how, so you, what, in, in, exactly, yes. But how do you, how will you know that? Well, I, th I think the I think you would have to create. It depends on the type of assessment that you would create for that, right? Whether it's a a, a summary of an article in the, in the shared language or just a few um, like uh, just comprehension questions. You yes, know that might exactly. not be the best method, but that's the way you know. But in the in in this in this classroom activity, how do you know that they are doing it? I would. I don't know. I could have them. What? I think. I think one thing that I could do is say rank the top features of each city. <laughs> Exactly, for, exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah. we already have it in the Blackboard, right? We, the students yeah. are showing, are, are telling us, or telling me or someone who is in charge of the Blackboard to say, well, which city do you like 
Grant Kyoto and you, what city your partner likes Kyoto too? Oh, Kyoto, okay. And you got make a tally and it's Kyoto and then we have Hawaii. Well, uh, Josh, what do you think Kyoto is in your, in your service? Because it has lots of parks, because it has lots. So everyone is giving you information and that sense you are monitoring that people are getting it because you have the list on the, on the, on the blackboard, right? And this is giving you the information that students have it. Also, if students are writing, right, why they like one city or the other okay, in this step C, right? You, if you are, you know, if you, I, I might personally, I might not do it, but if I want to monitor, I might take, I might say the student, to the students, give me your pieces of paper and I'm going to check at home, right, whether or not you understand what I wanted to do, right, based on your your, what you wrote, right? This is another type of evidence that I can measure, that is going to help me to measure whether or not the students were doing the things that I want, that I wanted to do. Yes, comprehension questions, ex Mirna says, exactly the comprehension questions, when you ask in le letter A, right, um, what um, Kyoto and what things are similar in both cities and what differences are there, students may have written that information as comprehension questions, Mirna, right? And then you can ask them to write them on the, on the, on the on a paper and then give it to you, for example. And then you have evidence. This is an evidence that students are using the vocabulary or understanding what is that <clears throat> the cities uh, are likable for. Summarize what they listen to. Okay, fine. Okay, the thing that happens, comprehension question, graphic organ, all of these things are extras right and you don't want extras you want what is that this pedagogic task is giving me you know as information of student progress now the graphic organizer and the summary could be very and you're going to see when i give you a little bit more information in a few minutes is that you can you can ask them for homework right summarize you know what you learned about kyoto and then the students are doing for homework, and this is another piece of evidence that you can um, that you can use to evaluate, right? To assess students' progress. Fantastic. Let's see another example so it's clear. So this is the favorite city. Let me just go a little bit. Okay. So I create another pedagogic task for you to see, and you are going to do the same the same um, analysis that I. In what ways this activity is valuable and what is the pieces of evidence that you are going to get from this activity that you can assess you know and show the students progress so i don't know if you can see this is very small but it says the purpose of this activity is to give a presentation on a neighborhood students like not the ideal neighborhood like the target task but a neighborhood that the students like the class will select which neighborhood is best Right. So someone yesterday, I don't know, I don't know if it was Susan or someone yesterday were, were asking me, uh, how do you prepare the students for presentations, which is because this is an ability, right? The students need to practice presentations for this target task and discourage the reading, right? Because students just go, go, they just go there and then start reading. And this is not part of the evaluation criteria. You cannot read in a presentation because your, your audience is going to fall asleep. So you better find a way of presenting in a lively way maybe use you know a little um card you know that 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 guides you but you cannot read right if you read you're gonna have a bad mark so this is activity first think of a neighborhood you like in your town or a town that you know then read the list below and mark the statements that apply to this neighborhood list and the list has both positive and negative aspects, right? So this neighborhood is very pretty. Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh yeah, it is very pretty, this neighborhood. It's close to downtown. No, 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 it's very far. It has a lot of traffic. Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, there is plenty of green areas. Yes, so the students are checking all these, um, there are like, I don't know, 15 or something, you know, aspects, bad and good, that the favorite neighborhood has, right? A neighborhood that they like. Then, they uh, they can do write five more sentences or three more sentences that describe your neighborhood. In, and in that in this particular part of this pedagogic task, what I want is for students to be able to start making sentences with the grammar that I want. That is the grammar that I want that is conducive to this task. Right? Has and there is. Right? It is the two verbs that they are need to that they need. Right? So in my favorite neighborhood there are what extra things that are not in the list 
in my favorite neighborhood has things or don't have, for example, doesn't have, and tell me a few things um, different from the list. And here, the students are gonna ask you, how do you say, as I, it happened to me, uh, baseball, uh, baseball stadiums? How do you say monuments? How do you say murals, someone told me. So, and in that way, students are creating their own vocabulary that may help them for the final task. And this three one, this number three, I think don't like that there is, is that there isn't any parks. But I ask my students with this one, if this is applicable for you, use it. But if it is not applicable for, for you, maybe your favorite neighborhood has everything. <laughs> the, the, no, nothing is missing, right? So only if you think that it, that you would like to see in your favorite neighborhood, write it down. Otherwise, leave it blank. Okay. And then you are going to write a summary with both the positive and the not so positive aspects, if there are, right? And give a presentation describing your neighborhood to the rest of the class. The class will take notes and a class decide which neighborhood is best. So what I want the students to do, right? The ideal pr product is something like this. My favorite neighborhood is Leshu. It is very pretty and it has it is very lively. It is close to downtown. It has many historic buildings. What I don't like is that there is, that doesn't have any green areas. So someone will say, well, what happened? What is going to happen, Claudia, is that they are going to write a summary, they are going to present it, and they are going to read the summary, <laughs> right? Yes, of course, they are going to, that is going to happen. However, you can you can say, well, now write your summary and um, read it. You know, by yourself, read it. You know, in your mind, read it. You know, and with a partner, try to describe your neighborhood with a partner to a partner you know, without without looking at your card or your summary, right? So it's a little bit of a practice, right? And your partner is going to do this practice for you. This is practice, and I, I love, I hate that word, say practice grammar because it's just nonsense. But you can practice an ability, I give a presentation. You know, yesterday I practiced what I was doing today, right? So this is not from something that is out of this world. And then when they present to the class, you encourage a little bit not to use what they were, what, what, what they wrote. Or you can put also some things, what Florencia was saying yesterday was this willing uh, training wheels, right? In the Blackboard, it has, it doesn't have um, uh, what I like, right? Things that they can use and they can very quickly take a look at if they are stuck, for example. So in a way, this is a mini, a mini, target task, right? I mean, target task. Now, what the students are going to be doing is something like this, the, the, the audience, right? When, they, when, the, when the student is presenting, if you give the students, the audience, something like this, then the presenter thinks, oh shit, I should be, I should be clear, right? Because if someone is gonna take notes, I mean, actual notes of my presentation, hmm, this is serious, so I should be, comprehensible, people are going to maybe ask, maybe you can say the audience that is, they can ask questions, right? Can you repeat, you know, what did you say about it? About what is the name again of your neighborhood? And then it's a little bit of an interaction. So in that way, you know, the students have all this, this piece of paper and they are going to score the neighbor. And I score it too, because if it doesn't have green areas, for me is very important you know, to have green areas in a neighborhood. So I score it too. And then at the end, you, you know, everyone is giving you the, 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 the score, right? And then find out what is the most popular one, right? So this is the pedagogic task to prepare my students. Now, tell me what you think. Why is this task valuable for the target task? For the target task, right, the neighborhood. What is the evidence that I might get from this task that is going to show me that the students are learning? Um, what tools should I use or nothing? Just as I said, just a mental, mental note, right? Or maybe a checklist, a very quick checklist. And what opportunities for feedback do I, can I give in this task? And what challenges do you think I can, or we can face? So I'm gonna give you like 30 seconds to think. There are many questions. If anyone can, you don't have to answer them in that, in that order, of course. <clears throat> what do you think?
Mirna says, yes, provide support for novice learners. Yes, provide support for novice learners. Yes, of course, yes. Mostly when it is about talking, right? About speaking, about giving presentations, yes. Um, that is a very good thing. Um, so the challenge is scheduling, allowing sufficient time for everyone to present their classes. Of course, Shannon. <laughs> Of course, yes, scheduling allowing sufficient time. Yes, so this activity, for example, this pedagogic task, it might take the 50 minutes of my class, for example, right? If I have 20 students, so maybe not, maybe do it in pairs, you know, or something like that, or maybe in groups, you know. Uh, well, it's a challenge for sure, you know, how are you going to and give feedback to everyone, right? In that sense, you know. So, what other thing that you, what another, in what ways this maybe adds value to the target task? Claudia, I think I think it sounds a bit like obvious to say this, but like it's just a it's a relevant formative assessment for the target task, right? If the target task is to describe an ideal neighborhood, well, the first thing you have to be able to do is talk about neighborhoods, period, right? And and this is just one of the baby steps that you have to take to get there. And if exactly. and, and as a teacher, if you're looking at their responses to this task and they're struggling, well, then you know that they're nowhere near ready for the target task. Exactly. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's another thing that you can do if the students are more or less ready. In your opinion, you can give them a mini target task. My colleague Lisa Aguilar, um, in my in, in my program, she does that all the time. She comes to my office and say, "Oh, you know what? I, my students already did the target task. How come? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I just, you know, I just put them to do like a mini target task that is similar, but give them the preparation." If you go to, if you think about the the the, the birthday cake that I was telling you, you know, yesterday. Maybe a mini task would be this for me to if I if you think that I'm prepared to 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 bake a cake, maybe I can do a um, a birthday cake, a, a version of a very simple cake, right? Very simple, no icing, nothing. It's just a few ingredients, and in that way, the experience that I go that I go through is going to help me prepare me good for the final birthday cake that has icing and everything, right? So fantastic! This is very good, uh, Grant. And Alejandro says, I agree to Shannon. I like the lesson plan, but this would be a lot of time. Yes. And that is that is why, what, what is happening with us, you know? Uh, and I know that we have things to cover and things like that. But my point is that the way I see classrooms is doing, is helping students to use the language, right? And tasks are complex things to do. So what is, if, if, but, if I want students to be able to use the language, I would need to do these pedagogic tasks that are very well structured, that have a communicative purpose, that everyone is involved, etc. So in that way, you know, um, it is maybe a change of our perspective on how to teach a language, right? But look at how many things students will be able to learn and to do with this. I think is worth it, right? The the use of time. Okay. Someone else wants to say something about this pedagogic task. It prepares them to express their opinion. Yes, Mirna, express their opinion. And in that way, the opinion is important when they are going to uh, prepare the my ideal neighborhood, right? Because it's a matter of opinion. It's my opinion. The ideal neighborhood for me has to have baseball stadiums, right? It's what a, a, a class a class a student told me one day. Yeah, so it, it prepares to, uh, to give them opinion, which is important for the final task in that way. Evidence, Shannon says, is the actual presentation. Exactly, Shannon. If you can listen to all of them, you can give them feedback, either written or via interaction with them directly at the presentation. Exactly, exactly. So if the presentation is giving you, you know, the evidence that you need to monitor whether or not these students, students are ready or not, right? And if they are not ready, maybe to the, the following day, you can create another or adapt another task in which students present. Okay, so. Oh, absent students, a, ch a challenge, yes, of course, Yolandi. Yeah, of course, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so let's just um, do something because I'm, I know that we are running out of time, but uh, just, I want you to just at least to think, right, with using your target task, the one, the, the fabulous, the very nice target task that you have already thought about and their components, and thinking about your target task, what pedagogic task would you create from scratch or you adapt from your textbook, or you select from your textbook because they think that they are good to support your target task. And when you do that, think about two things. What is the pedagogical purpose? What components of the target task do you like to focus on? Uh, presentation or linguistic resources or the abilities or all of them, right? If the task is very complete. And always, what is the communicative purpose? 
will what are going to, are the students are going to do with the information that they gather, right? What is if you don't give a purpose, it's, it's not it's not um, it's not, is why, why are we doing this? You know, maybe your students are less cynic than my students. <laughs> my students, you know, at the university, they lose interest if they don't see the purpose of it, right? So why why are we doing this? Because at the end we are going to select the best ones, right? Because at the end we are going to decide which is the most popular one or whatever is the end result. And they have to know it and you have to know it too from the beginning of the task, as I put it in instructions. And your pedagogic task, how would you evaluate the learning? So again, I, you, are gonna, you are gonna see this, this, this um, slice again. So what, is, what, what value, value does it afford to the target task? What is the evidence that you wanna see? Because at the end of the day is formative assessment, right? And what is it? What are the tools that I'm gonna use, right? Or nothing, I mean, maybe a quick rubric, you know, maybe a quick note, you know? Um, what is the feedback, the opportunities, in what ways can I communicate my feedback for students so they know? right what if they are doing it correctly or not or and the challenges that this is going to you know have so i just want to give you finally additional information for formative assessment with tasks that maybe you know right um, so the first thing that i would like to say is that there are other learning experiences that students can have to support their success in the final task besides the pedagogic tasks you know for example, as long as they are meaningful, as long as they are meaningful. So activities. So for example, for my target task, an activity could be write a description of your neighborhood to your teacher. If you feel confident, you know, if you feel that it's a good task for students, sometimes my students live in very bad neighborhoods and they, you don't want, you know, them, or maybe they don't want to share that with me, right? But it could be, you know, or list the five best things that make neighborhoods ideal. This could be for homework, right? Or listen to someone describing the neighborhood and answer the comprehension questions. It's just like listening, as a listening comprehension activity, for example, right? But it's going to help students in their achievement of target task. Or you can have exercises. There's nothing wrong with exercise as long as they are meaningful, right? And they have some, um, pedagog uh, pedagogical value. So for example, read, listen to the following statements indicate if they are true or false about Kyoto, right? Someone was saying here later, I mean, before and a few uh, uh, previously to write a summary, for example, about something that would happen in class or match the places with people, what uh, with what people do them, you know, for example, supermarkets, grocery shopping, it's just a matching, a matching exercise, right? Students can are gonna maybe students are gonna do it mindlessly. That is the that, that is the horrible thing with exercises. But you are just creating the opportunity for more for vocabulary enrichment, for example, or fill in the blanks with the name of the place that you see on the map, for example. So the school is next to someone was because next to might be this 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 vocabulary is important. And these exercises can be auto graded. So it's not, it's not that you have to spend a lot of time. So finally, what, this is my final thoughts and I maybe will have a little bit more time for questions or comments or anything that you want to share with us. But formative assessment can be time consuming as for sure. You know, you know that very, very well, I, I'm sure. It's too much data to keep track of. Yeah, oh my God, in every class I have to do, <laughs> I have to keep track. You don't have to, but it is, it is a formative assessment is, Lots of data that you have, you, you need to keep track to, and it's difficult to assess. Sometimes we need uh, training how to do that for sure. You know, and this is something that you have to learn as a teacher. So my suggestions for for us is to make simple scores in rubrics. If you're going to use rubrics, you know, so use one to four, right? You will correctly. If I, the presentation was low, okay, great. You know, very quickly, you know, just to have an idea how it goes. It doesn't have to be a very complex rubric. Um, to, to do this formative assessment. Create and adapt exercises, activities that are autocorrected if you have um, a student management system like Blackboard or Canvas. And very, very important, and I would like to finish with this, is focus on the whole picture when you give feedback or in general, right? As my friend Florencia Henshaw says, do not lose the forest for the trees. Students are not going to be fantastic in all the verb conjugations of all the adverbs and the things. No, and that is not necessarily for the for the target task. Remember that it is about task completion and not perfection. So thank you very much for your attention. I wish I had 
more time, you know, but if you, I would like really to hear if someone wants to say something or comment something that can enrich us, you know, as we finish this workshop. Gracias, Alejandra. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. Did you happen to have the feedback slide? I do have, yes. Yeah, Many awesome. things. So, this is my email and here is it. Yeah, exactly. I just awesome. want to see if, if someone has questions. Of course, of course. Yeah, now is a great time if you have questions or comments for Dr. Fernandez about task-based language teaching or formative assessment and task-based language teaching, pedagogical tasks, whatever, whatever you have. The floor is open for you to speak. As always, of course, be sure to uh, fill out the feedback form. I'm going to put the link in the chat and you can also scan the QR code. As I mentioned yesterday, every time you fill out the feedback form, you get one entry. So in a maximum oh, of yes. three entries into our giveaway, which will we'll, uh, conclude at the end of this week. And of course, if you tweet using uh, hashtag extemporary PD, you can also earn an entry into our giveaway as well. So a total of four entries, fill out the feedback form. And of course, any questions or comments for Dr. Fernandez, the floor is open. Oh, this is my, my very first time listening to a very detailed using task. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mirna, for being here. I'm so happy. And uh, I please let me know if you need anything else that I can help you with. That's fantastic. Thank you. That's very nice to hear, Mirna. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. I think I, I wait. have a question. Yes. Who are you? Let's see. Dora. Dora. Okay, Dora. Yes, Dora. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know. Um, you know, as uh, we have to avoid teaching grammar. Now, if I go back to the task you shared about um, the uh, my favorite neighborhood. Uh huh. Um, here the students will be practicing the grammar structure of you said the verb to have. So it's gonna be the third person. Uh -huh. So are you going to multiply or provide a variety of activities so they will have different forms of the verb? Well, I don't know. I, it, it may be another task. They might have a different forms of the verb. Um, for now, you know, the students, I know, I, as I said, I might not even touch on this verb thing, you know, because what is going to happen since my students are novice, they are going to most likely, that's to happen, just memorize it as if it was one vocabulary word it has it has right it has maybe as a chunk either you know mm -hmm. it has so no i really do not do not uh, foresee uh, any need to practice any any grammar structures or any uh, vocabulary the fact that they are doing this task is already um it is um powerful enough for students to be learning what is that they need to learn in order to accomplish the task so yeah, no, no, I'm not saying that you don't, that you have to avoid teaching grammar at all, right? No, but just, just it is important to know, I think when you, when you devise your components of your target task, what is exactly that the, the students, the linguistic things that the students need to know. And you are gonna see that they are very specific and very, um, uh, that they do, do not need to know the why or the hows of these linguistic resources, you know? It's just yeah. things that you know because you need to use them. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't use, I don't teach verbs. I don't teach, uh, you know, the traditional way. But what I'm asking this is because through, uh, you know, CI with uh, TPRS, mm -hmm. and so we get yes. to a part of the story where we have to say the plural, and then they have learned to say I eat, <laughs> he eats, and then now we want to say we eat. And then it changes so much, and they're like, "Why is that either?" So I need to get up from there and <laughs> quickly just yeah, use. exactly. And this is what okay. you call pop pop up grammar, right? Pop up grammar is what uh, is is called, right? That we very quickly you 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 give an explanation like I don't know two seconds, and then you go on. Yeah, that happens, and it happens with students, of course, yes. So it could be the same thing with us for sure, you know. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what May says, uh, if there's something in the, this has been, okay, so what are the references you use, please, for the task theory? Okay, I will, I will put them in the, I will put them in the slides, and I'll give it to you for sure, yes, May, when I upload the slides. Uh, and Mira says, perhaps add enough of repetition in your activities 
in your pedagogical task for them to see the chunk of language. Yes, Mirna, yes, of course. Um, this is a way of enacting the task, right? When the students are giving you the answers, maybe you can recast or you can give, it's like, uh, or you know, use more language right, in your input. Uh, very nice, yes, Mirna. Um, okay. Anyone else? <clears throat> another question from Nadia in the chat. Claire. Okay, Nadia. Or oh, Nadia, let's see. And Cheryl wants to also say something. Nadia, let's see. Okay, Nadia, how do you encourage students to stay in the target language when they negotiate meaning in the classroom? Um, um, well, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, uh, I, depending on the level of my students, let's put it that way. I encourage students to stay in the target language because I stay in the target language, right? And because I try for my tasks not to be too demanding of output if they are not ready, right? So my students might not need to negotiate meaning in the classroom necessarily uh, if they are novice students because they might not know or very Let's say that they, are, they may not know how to do it very well, I'm gonna say. It. They can negotiate meaning when you are novice students by saying, repeat, please, I didn't hear um, um, again, right? These just chunks that you, that you teach, so they usually do it. But negotiating meaning in the sense of back and forth, you know, it is not something that I usually do very much in my novice, cl in my novice class, uh, classes. Um, although, of course, they have to do, uh, they have to do a, um, interactional tasks. And in that way, you know, my rubric has the specifications on what I, I, I expect, right? But my point is that I do not, yeah, that is just my, my, my way of thinking is that if I teach basics to novice students, I do not expect too much production, right? Necessarily. I give lots of comprehensible input, as you know, I want them to interact with me by things that, by ways that are not necessarily linguistic, like not in their, their heads, you know, just saying yes, no, or blue, or whatever, just one, one word answers, you know. So in that way, my students think, I, I think that way of encouraging is that when they, when they see that using the language is not threatening, and is not as difficult as they think it is. I think, Nadia, if, if, I, if I ask, if I, if I answer your question. And, um, can, and Alejandro says, uh, can we expect more production in second year? I, uh, that would be the mid law. I would, I would say yes. I mean, you, I think that you, Alejandro, know your students much better. It's, you know, when you say intermediate law, <clears throat> not all of the students are, are intermediate law. I'm sure you know that. So you can, you can see what is that your students can do, right? Could do, right? So I would expect more production as we go on, of course, not even, in, not even in the second year, maybe at the end of the first year, or maybe, you know, it depends on what you want the students to produce, right? But I, um, what I would just avoid is that this need that all oh, my students have to talk. Well, no, because talk, as you know, Alejandro very well, comes at the, at the end, right? So just give, give, the, give the opportunities for this language to start developing, and eventually, you know, the students are going to use it. But of course, if I if my students were advanced students, then my task would look differently. Yeah, for sure. So I teach rejoinders, reaction expressions, etc. In context, increase exposure. Exactly. Yes, Dora. Uh -huh. Yeah. Linda says for classes in pragmatics could could use the components of activity and presentations to identify analyze speech accent discourse. Okay. Okay. Uh, Yol Yol uh, Yolani says, how do you choose the topics you want students to learn in level one novice students? How long does, to, does it take to move from one topic to another? Okay, so Yolani, uh, the topics that I that I choose is um, are based on uh, my textbook. You know, the textbooks are very good. The, the textbooks have a lot of limitations, <laughs> you know that. But the things that are good too, um, uh, for uh, things that are good for I think is that they got they give us topics right uh, family uh, food health etc so these are the topics that I that I have the ones that, that my that my textbook tells me right and <clears throat> uh, how long does it take to move from one topic to another well from if you mean from one task to another you know what I what we have in in my curriculum is that every two weeks there is a new task a new final task so teachers and students have two weeks to prepare the student for the final task. But it's just arbitrary, you know, from like, it could be one week or it could be three weeks, you know, depending on your students, depending on your program. 
but there should be something doable at the end of certain time, right? That is not too too long, I mean, otherwise a project, right? So that is my um, what I do, Yolani. And uh, I think that someone, Cheryl, you have a question for a long time, so tell me. <clears throat> You know, I'm listening. These are all really good questions that I could ask the same thing. Now, I was the one that did um, same thing following the, my textbook, um, likes, dislikes, interests, and it just says express. And it really does not, it, it seems like it's interactive, but it really is not. Exactly. And exactly. I like, so now as I'm sitting here listening, and so I think I, I see what I need to do, which is a lot more thought. But instead of just express or find someone who maybe I'm updating the city's activity magazine and find out what are the likes, interests, you know, what should be included, what what would, what should we have around here that would make the city, and then the same cultural component, you know, um, yeah. because if you're in a specific area in the <clears throat> textbook, you know, if you traveled to these cities, would you find activities that you like or? Uh -huh. So I think I just need to, and, and it gives objectives, the chapter objectives, and here's the goal is to do this, but those are really the pedagogic tasks, not necessarily the target tasks. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So what happens with our text is that we need to find out what is an, what could be an interesting target task that we can derive at the end of the unit, you know, and I wish the writers of the textbooks do that for us. That will, that will take a lot, a, lot, a lot of time. But, you know, that will be, if, if a chapter is on health, you know, and we have, and the students need to have to learn all of these things, what for, right? What for, what would be an interesting task that is doable in 50 minutes, right? Or something, you know, that the students can show what they can do, right? And a task that actually would be good for the outside of the world, you know, people give presentations, people do blogs, people write things, you know, interviews. So that is something that maybe we have to, maybe most likely we'll have to find out, yeah, what is a task at the end. And that, you know, once you know that, once you know your task at the end of the chapter, everything comes like a domino effect. I love right. that because you have a guidance, you know, you have a, everyone has a guidance and a purpose, right? Right, and our, our text that we're working with is 20 years old. We don't have oh, yes. any of it. <laughs> You know, so yeah, I, it's just a little more work for me to. Yeah, yeah, together. I see. I understand. I understand. With the old book a little easier. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, I understand. Yes, yeah. So Mirna says yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Sherry. No, that's it. Thank okay. you very much. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And just Mirna says, I don't know. Uh, I can go on uh, uh, grant, but they just stop me if it's it necessary. Just, say, just one thing, last thing, if it's possible, is Mirna says, yes, the task will guide all the instruction and the end product. Yes, Mirna, yes, yes. And it is just, I mean, once I did discover that for me, my life was so easy. So yeah, exactly. We'll guide everything. That is a task-based approach. Yeah, thank you, Mirna, for your comment. So I, is there anyone else that you want to, that I want to just chime in very quickly or grant, tell, tell me how we... I don't, know, I don't see anything else in the chat if if we are all satisfied which i certainly am i'm sure the rest of us are as well um we can stop recording and we can wrap up from here okay well thank you so much for uh being here thank you for so much for listening and i hope that this has been valuable for you and you know you have my email and if you have any questions that you will comments or want to share something with me i would love to hear it so thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of the summer thank you so much to claudia applause air snaps, fire emojis, whatever you want to apply. We are so grateful for Dr. Fernandez and what she's done for us from this PD. Don't forget, rest of our sessions, more to come today, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. Be there, hope to see you there, and we'll see you next time. Okay, see thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye.